There we go. So well, what did you what did you think of? Uh, like um, some previous movie, I have an assignment for you if you choose to take it. <laughs> choose to accept. <laughs> What's your thought? Uh, I don't know if you have enough data now or not, or data from, from prior days. Uh, but while I was on the elliptical this morning, it occurred to me, it might be interesting, at least to me, if we had a statistical distribution for each of the uh, drivers. Joe? Yeah. Um, it would be very interesting, Steve. We don't, we don't yet have a representative. We have a good amount of data. Yeah. We yet have a representative. That'd be interesting. I mean, I could do a rough swag of a, a limited, you know, a limited size cohort. Um, in, in addition to that, you know, you could have, okay, this one's always at the top or most likely at the top and blah, blah, you know, a, a, a ranking. Well, what you're, what you're, what you're, circling around here is my god how powerful will the outputs be when we have when we're able to pull from our own data and say okay here is because what we're really doing is decoding the genome for yep. a for a well-run business and it's not simply what what are the hallmarks right what are the the principles according to which best in class businesses are run. But as we see the businesses evolve over time, um, we are going to be able to see, well, businesses that did X typically saw Y results or doing X tends to indicate Y results. And I think we're gonna be, I am positive, good morning, Larry, that it's gonna be fascinating um, absolutely fascinating. The surprises inside the data uh, are going to be, you know, I think we're going to see that doing something that we've long thought was just a no brainer uh, may prove to be meh, you know, doesn't mm -hmm. hurt, but it doesn't really help. But doing something, well, we're going to find some surprises. And it's in that data that we are going to now imagine having your deliverables powered uh, by that data. And that's where we're going. I just need, um, we just need the community to go out and use the and and you are right. Continue to use the heck out of clarity. So um, it'll become especially interesting. It'll be yeah, it's going to be interesting. I mean, we're gonna we're busy building the uh, CEO Insights module, and uh, that would be the operational mirror the the st strategic and operational mirror to a CFO report. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then we'll API those two together, and Steve, good thinking. Your 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 ask is relatively straightforward. I can put someone on it just using just using um, some AI prompts. Yeah, no, I I think it'd be well. Obviously, I think it'd be useful. So thank you. Well, I think that there was there was some good statistical data on the on the predecessor program, right? Yeah, I have no access to that in any way. No, so. no, I know, I know. I'm just, I'm just saying, I'm just saying that conceptually it can be yeah. done. Yeah, oh, well, conceptually it absolutely can be done. I have, you know, the good news is, is where I had zero access to the to to everything beyond the user interface in the last system. I have 100 percent access in this one. Larry, I did not expect to see you, man. Yeah, I changed. Uh, I changed my plans this morning, so. Larry, you're I looking good. To, I didn't go to the ACG meeting. That's what I didn't do. So I'm here. Awesome. Glad, I'm glad to have Thanks, you. Steve. And Joe, great to see you as well. Guys, there are uh, there are a couple of things uh, that I'm hoping to pick your brains about just very quickly. Um, one is I've heard enough people not getting confused about what Clarity 1 and Clarity 2 are, but not being very clear on why they would use one or the other. And you obviously have to use level one before you can get to level two. Cool. Um, that paused, uh, that caused a little internal conversation about, well, is the concept of having level one and level two was to indicate that there was a deeper, you know, by calling something level one, one assumes that there's a deeper 
uh, deeper level. I don't know how important that is, but I put a little uh, survey out to say, hey, what do you think? I think Larry is, last time I checked, Larry's the only one who re responded. What do we? What do you think of changing the name of, level two is going to be the deep analysis. I mean, that is the absolutely right descriptor. Um, we have, and then we have uh, guidance, which we're about to, I, I want to show you something pretty cool. We have guidance, uh, execute guidance. We're going to have CEO insights. We have the range of values report, the equity value planner. All of those are very descriptive names. What if we changed clarity one to something else? Discovery, initial analysis, something. And I threw a few ideas out there, but feel free if, you, if you're willing to opine. If you have a better idea, throw it in the comments. Um, because we're we're probably going to tweak those two names just so that when you look at the dashboard, you know, um, eh, if it's helpful. So that was thing one. Thing two is the conference uh, the conference agenda, probably subject to tweaking, right? We always do. Um, is is published. It's on the website, and uh, would love to see you all hear the. Early bird registration runs through May 31st. I mean, it's we're in September, so that gives us kind of three months after that to, uh, that's three months out. So two, two, uh, two things. And, uh, and I was thinking about um, throwing guidance up on the screen and asking you guys to spitball, you know, let's walk through what you, what you find. There's a lot of excitement about it. So I thought we might, uh, get get some of that excitement on tape, um, including your questions and criticisms, uh, uh, ideas, etc. What do you think? Good. I'm going to take silence gives consent. They tell, teach you that the first year of law school. So, uh, <laughs> so if silence gives consent. I'm going to uh, let me make sure I'm not sharing something I shouldn't be sharing. Never volunteer for anything. The never ever volunteer. Um, okay, I'm going to show you, do, 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 share my screen. And after the, you know, why does Zoom now do this, right? Do we all need to see the fact that there's a Zoom login? No, we don't. All right. Um, what we do need to see is this. All right. I'm going to get our pictures out of the way. So, You'll notice on your dashboard there's a, there is there's a green button. If once you've completed some portion of level two, there's a you'll see a green button appears in your reports. It says guidance. Cool. Here we are in guidance for a uh, for this business. And what is guidance? Well, execute guidance is designed to get the juices flowing about how we might prioritize um, and how we might tackle specific, you know, achieving certain uh, growth driving objectives. So from a high level, we can sort, you can sort a, according to this top nav bar. You can also sort like, oh, I want to see everything in dimension two. I click search and here it is. And then inside dimension two, I might say, well, I want the low hanging fruit. I want my, uh, I want my three ranks search. Three ranks, so four is best, three, two, one, right? One is, oh, I don't know what that is. So here are all my, here's my low-hanging fruit in dimension two. Okay, cool. Maybe I want to sort it by my most recently updated. All right, here we are. So here are the things I worked on most recently in the second dimension, et cetera. So you can see, well, you can slice and dice a um, hundred different ways. All right. You can also search. God, I wonder. I want to work on compensation. Um, here we go. I've, I've just put. You'll see as I type, it starts winnowing. So uh, compensation. Okay. Uh, right. Here's my. Here are my. Here are the the areas that talk about compensation, or I want to talk about uh, leadership. Here's every time leadership is mentioned. Okay. So there's there's a lot of ways to search. Well, that's cool. Let's clear that out. Now, I want to help the CEO. 
I'm starting an engagement. I'm working with it. I'm, I'm you, right? I'm working with a COI who is a, an insurance and wealth advisor. And I want to highlight mutually beneficial things that are good for the client that are, that are going to, that are going to check some what's in it for me boxes for my strategic referral partner, strategic, let's make these people happy. So they keep coming back. Okay, great. What do I care about? Well, um, I know that in effective senior leadership, there are a couple. It's um, so let's let's focus on a couple of things um, that would be called that would be teased out in BEI's, the Business Enterprise Institute's owner based planning program, or what we call um, what we call business business continuity and growth planning. Um, well, the business runs smoothly in the CEO's absence. How the heck am I going to make that happen? We'll click on read more. And here's some, some guidance, right? It's not advice, but it's guidance. We're going to document the key CEO accountabilities. We're going to create decision-making protocols. We're going to empower the senior leadership team. We're going to brief them on them, empower senior leadership team. Um, and then we're going to conduct regular simulations. This comes straight out of the military, guys. Regular simulations to test and improve effectiveness. Um, those of you who are students of the military as an organization know how good they are um, at doing this. Regular simulations. So that now I, as the CEO, I know I can leave town for a month. And the business is, is at least going to keep doing what it's doing, right? How about succession? Uh, the business has a succession plan for each senior leader. Click on guidance, identify the covered members, document accountabilities, identify internal extension and external, internal and external succession candidates. And that's because um, the CFO may go on paternity leave. That's one type of coverage that's needed. Uh, the CFO might have a heart attack, not dead, but, but you know, but going to be out of the office for a, a, a long while. Okay, that's another type of coverage. Um, or the CFO just got poached by the competition. Well, that's a third type of, or we had to fire the CFO, whatever. That's a third. So let's let's look at these different these different stripes. And this anticipates that that the complexity of real life, right? Um, written knowledge transfer and onboarding protocols can uh, communicate the plans. And this is where the insurance people should be happy. Plan funding for succession. And you can copy these and paste them. And he says, sorry, I forget, oh, I'm on the dev server, so I can't copy on the dev server. This is being published. Uh, this notes, everything else is on production right now. The no, the, the, what I'm about to show you is, is being released this morning. So we also have, so I'm showing this to you on the dev server is what I'm saying. Um, we have the ability to add notes. Um, I worked with the SLT and you can in insert hyper hyperlinks. Um, you know, and you can put them as a hyperlink. You can cut and paste stuff in here. 2000 characters. And by the way, guys, you hear me. If that proves to not be enough, it is very simple for us to increase um, the number of characters. Okay. So this goes to, yeah, we can increase the number of characters. We can then also copy the note. We can save the note um, and, uh, you know, and paste it somewhere else. So now I'll shut up and ask for your feedback. Out of boy, George. <laughs> Thank you, Steve. <laughs> That's the kind of feedback I'm looking for. Uh, I thought you didn't volunteer, Steve. <laughs> yeah. uh, just, oh, oh, by the way, George, uh, I don't know. Several months ago, I did a a page worth of uh, read more on each of the drivers. So, oh, did you? So I, so I concur, obviously. <laughs> one, out, one out of one boys concurs. Awesome. Um, thank you, Steve. Welcome. How about you, David? 
No, I'm not. No one's on the spot, by the way. You can be like, you know, I, I have I haven't had time to think this through. So, so this is this is uh, this is what I understand. This is uh, after we've done uh, clarity two. Yes. Okay. So yeah. this is kind of like okay. So we've we've done we've done some of clarity two or all of it, and and this is kind of the 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 uh, implementation stage where we're we're trying to like improve improve the scores. That's correct. We're okay. The scores. We're looking for guidance. What am I going to do with this client? What have I done? Where can I have a central place to, you know, to to a central repository for these notes? Okay, so, so I got a quick question. So contribution to equity value ROI. Um, yep. What can you explain to me, kind of how you roughly come up with that? Yeah. So this is this is our this is calculated for the for the objective. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so not for the key result, we decided not to break it down by key result. I mean, we could, but, but um, in one key result in, of its, uh, in and of itself. So this is how much this objective contributes to um, closing the value gap. Right. So, the, so in this case, the objective of effective senior leadership. Effective senior leadership. You've got it. Okay. And that, and that is uh but but is this the this calculation? I mean, I I kind of roughly guess how it's it's done. I mean, it's 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 you know you're as as you as you score higher, like we know we know the full range. So I'm assuming as as we score higher, we have a a rough theoretical number that we're throwing in there, saying okay, well you you you've improved it. So in theory, you've added this much to your enterprise value, give or take. That's exactly right. And, and I'll, I'll do a quick recap. So we know that what the business would be worth at the top end of the range of multiples, that's its value. That's its transferable value at high strategic capacity. In fact, let's, let's do this. Bear with me one moment, because I want to make sure. Um, go back. Okay. We're, we're love seeing everyone, but I need to. So. I'm just going to jump into a random. Here we go. So back in Zoom, resume share. Okay, so I've just gone to the range of value module. Now this is, we're on the dev server. This is absolutely fictitious data. So you have, here's our value at the high multiple. And we've yeah, tweaked, yeah. we've changed based on the community's feedback how we talk about these things. Transferable value at high strategic capacity. Here we are, top yeah. multiple. Current transferable value is right here. That is the that is the high value, high capacity times uh, strategic capacity as a percentage. Um, so, so, okay, here's our current transferable value. So obviously, David, to your point, the higher we make strategic capacity, the closer we get to this number, um, keeping in mind that for it to be transferable, you know, we need to make sure that we're moving this score as well. So, you know, I think in a typical engagement, we'll be working on this number, the growth capacity number, which is dimensions one and dimension two weighted, you know, done on a weighted basis. Um, and then we'll get into dimension three. And dimension three is some future thing? Yeah, well, no, uh, dimension three, transferable, oh, sorry, sorry, transferable David. value. Yeah. You just, you just inadvertently, David, hit on why level one, level two, and then dimension one, dimension two, and dimension three, where the where the confusion is coming in. Yes, okay. Um, okay. And I know you're not confused on this, but that's you. No, just, no, I, yeah, I, I, I was thinking cl clarity three, like you know, like there's some there's some future clarity level three. And, yeah, and, and, yeah, and then it's like, okay, well, I, I know what dimension three is. Yes. There is, and there's a, there is a, a de facto dimension three, which is going to be our execute guidance, which is out. Mm -hmm. um, and then the soon to be released uh, CEO insights, which I did a short video on here a couple of weeks ago, which, and which the team is coding right now. Um, but that's, but, you know, zeroing in on value now to answer your question, David, if we look at the delta between 65 and 140 or 66 and 140, that is that the lack of strategic capacity is due to is equates to company specific risk. Mm -hmm. And I know you're you know this stuff cold. 
Mm -hmm. um, but just for the for the uninitiated, company specific risk is is the is the me method through which we apply a discount to the business. We say, well, you can't get six x. You can sell, but the value of your business is more like two x due to the risk inherent in your business, company specific risk. And so the delta between these two numbers can logically be assigned across the business's operational areas, if you will. And we assign it across the growth driving objectives on a weighted basis again. So when we look in, um, in guidance uh, and we see that, that ROI, that is that is the number that is the subset of the of the value gap that can be attributed to that growth driving objective. Long-winded answer to a simple question. Sure. I, I no, no, I, I, that that makes complete sense to me. Yeah. Cool. George, can you go back to it? Uh, George. Yeah. I can. A little contrarian viewpoint here. Um, so emotionally. Um, how do I connect? I mean, yes, monetarily, money, all that, but emotionally as an owner, how are we connecting to them with these, this platform uh, on a kind of a, you know, is, is there, is there something we can weave in there from an emotional standpoint, um, you know, that softer side of things? Of course, Joe, and let me, I'll give a, sh a short answer. Um, and I'd love to I'd love to answer it more fully um, if we have time. But the short answer is, listen, we have the strategic planning, uh, you know, the strategic planning doc. What we're really trying to get at is to have that initial growth conversation during which we're saying, OK, th this is I understand that you want to take um, net income from three million to five million. Why is that? What does this company need to ultimately deliver for you and for your family? What does it need to do for your stakeholders, your senior leadership team? What is this business a vehicle to deliver? And, and zeroing in, the emotions get strongest when we zero in on family. Um, the business needs, well, I need to get to 5 million because I want to be sure that the business will deliver 20 million to me uh, when I when I sell it. And I, my understanding is that I need, you know, to get, I need, I might get a six times multiple, you know, but I could get four, whatever. That's going to get me to 20, the 20 million I need now. Okay, great. Why, why 20 million? What does that do for you? Uh, we can use techniques like our, like the Ford technique. We can practice the techniques that are in the growth drive playbook, the deep listening, which is really guiding through questions. Um, we, so there, there, is a, there are a lot of tools uh, in the community uh, on this point, uh, but to really lead them to, to have a very, very clear and well-defined um, statement of what this business needs to deliver long-term, and importantly, Joe, uh, what will happen if they don't achieve it, right? What will happen? Okay, well, what happens if the business doesn't deliver 20 million to you and your family? What does that look like? How would that make you feel? How would that impact your family? How would that impact, you, you know, X, Y, and Z? And to talk, we don't not to belabor, but to talk about the impact of not hitting it. And we have found uh, over time that having the growth conversation, that really clearly defining what the business needs to deliver and why it's the why that's the story, that's the emotion, and getting a, a you know, a, a short trip down the what happens if it don't the egon things would be bad um conversation is makes creates an emotional basis um for all of this work and it becomes the touch point to which we can return um when things are you know do, execute planning uh planning to a certain extent is fun right um getting the plan together getting it out that's exciting Executing the plan is a long is a long job. It can be very very rewarding. It is essentially always also includes frustrations. Um, you know, it it has its own peaks and valleys uh, as we as we really redesign the business on the fly. And uh, having that emotional point to, to the point you're making, which is an excellent one, 
having that emotional touchstone to look back and say, all right, but this is worth it. This is worth it because if we don't, if we don't deliver, then the consequences are understood and, uh, and, and, and no bueno, not good. That somewhat related, somewhat related, but I wanted to share with you, I, I was talking with Eric Dombaum with coach's coach last night, and he had, had met with, uh, Gina Wickman years ago, and they're talking about planning of, and one of the, one of the problems with the EOS, um, and that many of these, um, business operating systems is they, they're called it, uh, dry rot. Yeah. Okay. And they related it back to the touch points with the owner and that, you know, over a period of time, because they're, the fee is such, um, that there's only so much time in the, in their contract that, that can, can provide to them um and and so responding to that uh eric's program is uh, really a weekly conversation with the business owner well so yeah i i, I agree it's like, i know eric but i agree formatted a half a you know half an hour and you know it just yeah and i think i think we all kind of need to understand um that we we got to provide you know prevent that dry rot where we're just uh, we're in there on a quarterly basis or, you know, monthly. I, I don't know. I, I, I figured out my structure. That's fine. It just, I thought that was really interesting um, terminology. And, uh, and when you're in there emotionally, um, you know, seeing, you know, the numbers are the numbers. I can see progress on Moneyball and that's cool. And, and all that. I just, how do we stay um, as that wingman? How do we structure that uh, cost effectively? Um, so, um, just just throwing it out there. I I I agree with Eric. Um, I you know I don't know the guy, but um, this is precisely why when we implement the execute leaders uh, the uh, yeah the execution leadership system. And we get them having better meetings. We give them the agenda that is in the ELS uh, for their their you know quarterly, monthly, and importantly, very importantly, weekly meetings. And you, I've said this uh, on the record a hundred times. If you only do one thing for your client, one thing only, get them to run their Monday morning meeting with a standing agenda that is oriented around the business flow scorecard. And you as the advisor should be getting that scorecard at in exactly the same at exactly the same time as the CEO. And not that the CEO has to send it to you, that the standing order is that whoever prepares it, let's say the CFO, you are on the you are on the distribution string. That gives you a weekly touch point. And you should pick up a cup of coffee, call the CEO, and meet with them. Just chat with them every week. Hey, I saw the I saw business flow. Looks like this is good. That looks like it's being challenged. What was the story with, you know, cash flow looks off. What's the story? So you can touch touch point about uh, several operational metrics inside the business every week. And you're getting that scorecard. And I agree with you, Joe. You know, we want to stay involved. And it is not a huge time. That is not a big time. We can all do that, right? I do it with a couple of guys. Um, you know, I don't have cases. I just have friends that I help. But, you know, that that's a great way to stay sticky. EOS has another problem, which is uh, EOS fatigue, which we won't get into right now. But they, you know, they lose after about 14 months. They're going to churn. They, they There's EOS fatigue. Dave, go ahead, man. Sorry, I just I just have to say, I unfortunately have to leave. I got a busy day, but uh, th thanks for uh, this great presentation. And hope to see, see you guys next week. Hey, David, thank you very much. We'll talk to you soon. Have a good day, guys. Yeah. And Larry, you well, asked me to go to, back to just just to circle back on, I, I, I'm on good, George. Uh, just to, just from a from a tracking perspective and kind of showing, you know, we're made we're making growth beyond the numbers. And that, that's where I'm that's where I'm at. It's just saying, okay, numbers are great, but emotionally, how do we connect in the everything and I understand I hear what you're saying what you do for your family long term and um, but there is some interim interim steps along the way and um, 
I, I think you're. I think it's just a matter of having an open, frank dialogue on a regular basis with the owner, um, checking how they're feeling about progress, right, and uh, and connecting with them at that level. Um, and in, in in the case, suggestion was that it's on a weekly basis, half an hour on a Zoom call, um, sure. standing tea time, just kind of like you know, you're going to meet with your coach, you're going to going to do kind of a a little bit of a dress down and sort of like, okay, pump up and move on for the next, uh, the next week. Um, but that rigors is, is there's, you know, it's, it's challenging, but what the, the argument is that that prevents that dry rot. I, and, and, well, and really, it leaves book, the, Joe, it's really, I, don't, I, com I completely agree. How yeah, do you say re relevant? Leaves, that's the yeah, thing. Leaves a relationship with the owner and you're not relegated down to the leadership team as being the ultimate decision maker on how do you retain in your in the relationship, because oftentimes if that goes down to the leadership team, and you know, it's up to them, um, they'd rather get a bonus than necessarily have somebody in there poking around all the time. They they tend to be a little shorter sided and by and large, you know. Well, and um, I think coaches, coach Joe, you make a very good point there. I mean, coaches, coach is focused on main street businesses and, and lower, you know, like not $20 million a year businesses. And that there, that is, that is the fabric of American, uh, of American um, industry. And that's outstanding. And to, to that well, point, you know, I think Eric is, is anticipating the tension between, you know, that is still at a layer uh, at a revenue point on their way up, right? A revenue point where we can be seen as a hit to the PL rather than an investment uh, in the future. Where the, the you know as companies gain sophistication, advice is viewed as an investment, um, not a cost. Yeah, you know, I'll, I'll throw in a couple couple tidbits. So some systems. Uh, you know, metronomics and um, VFD. Uh, VFD is kind of a tool, could go with any system, but nonetheless, the recommendation would be to do a strategic plan once a year. So you need to be there. For, well, you don't need to be, but if you're useful, you can be there to facilitate the strategic plan on an annual basis. And of course, once you're completed with that, then you've got a year to work the strategic plan for that year. So you know, that's, that's stickiness as well as uh, utility. Yeah. See, that's a good, a good point. And I, I frankly, I have to get better at that cadence. So just like we're recommending to our business owner clients, that cadence of yearly, quarterly, monthly, weekly, how do we do the same? And I, I certainly have to get better at it because it frustrates my client when they don't meet their own expectations, not mine, but their own. And why? Well, one month rolls to the next, rolls to the next. Yeah. We are in uh, mid-April. I still have two clients that have been uber excited about their scorecards and their money ball, and, and they're still working on it. I can only do so much. And they could pay me more, but I, it's not my ownership of it. It has to be their ownership of it. And they just can't get their own cadence going to complete it. So maybe a, to Joe, to your point, a weekly check-in on doing new things. I, I, I could not schedule a weekly check-in across the board, but I certainly can see by, getting that buy-in, Joe, you got me thinking when we're doing something new, maybe the beginning of the year, when we're that type of let, let's, let's check in every week for 30 minutes. Uh, occasionally I've done that, but not strictly. So thanks Joe, the idea. Yeah, I the also thing. Oh, go ahead, Larry. Well, I was just going to throw this, and another thing that we the growth drive sort of emphasizes, but I think it could be emphasized more. And and George just touched on it in his earlier comments about the scorecard. But uh, each business uh, should have a a plethora of KPIs that they're managing on a weekly, monthly, quarterly basis. So. That's certainly something that uh, you can check in on a, on a regular basis on, not just beyond financials. Let's say you got a manufacturing business and 
and you're looking at uh, widget productivity or or downtime or accidents or you know any number of things waste yeah yeah absolutely go ahead joe but don't, let's not forget the uh, second level leader too because i think um usually it boils down to like one person that's really going to be that wingman for the owner in plant in house and uh that that person needs a lot of support oftentimes and that the two of them the integrator and the visionary in the relationship between them um oftentimes need a need a referee or not let's say referee but just kind of a a source for material about how do we how do we prioritize each other's work and and then give uh productive feedback to uh each other and if we if having a third party like growth drive coming in and kind of helping with prioritization of things um but then let's let's talk about let's 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 have a conversation about implementation and it's not just with the ceo because oftentimes he would have to turn around and have the same length of conversation with the owner if the other people if, if not more but if you have a right hand guy that can be part of the implementation early on identified and then um just because we got to build in a outlet for stuff that's getting done right larry i mean you're, you're talking about stagnant um where are they do they really have, have someone that can handle this stuff off to and is it the cfo perhaps or is the next level leader the next guy that's gonna be groomed to take this thing over maybe maybe not but identifying that second person just have two people i'm i don't i don't know i just um I'm just trying to think through how do you get this implemented in a, in a more expeditious fashion and have them see evidence of developing a second person on their team because that's the emotional tag that you're looking for is like, how am I developing your team? How does your team responding? Do I have more time than ever to do what I want to do beyond, you know, it's that freedom piece. So evidence might be that we, you know, we we are developing and we're purposely including that next level leadership in this in these conversations. One hundred percent, one hundred percent. In the first dimension, we start with effective senior leadership, and we move to people productive and loyal. And in people productive and loyal, Joe, and you're making a fantastic point. There is does you know. It, it, have does everyone everyone in the organization understand the number that defines their success i'm summarizing but do they understand the number that defines their success now let's take a step back at the beginning of a of an engagement one of the projects we might tackle is to work with senior leaders the second layer the third layer we need to push that conversation down onto the shop floor and sorry, manufacturing old habit, but we need to push that onto the shop floor. We need to push that out into the, you know, the, the worker bees in a service business. What, what, like right now, we know that accountants were measured by the number of returns they, for senior managers, they checked, right? I need to check a hundred a day, whatever that number is. How do we, how do we create a good effective number for each person? Sometimes it can't be one number, but conceptually one number for each person and then have the organization run on the, the power of that knowledge, the accountability to that number, and honestly, the dignity that that number allows people to have. Right? So, uh, Joe, I, I thoroughly agree. And we need to involve, McDonald's isn't run by 60 year old people in wherever the heck they're headquartered st louis mcdonald's is run by 18 year old kids right what do those kids know what do they need to know what are they what is their guidance and they know they know all the numbers if i've never worked in a mcdonald's but that's my understanding you know how many how often how long does a burger how long can they sit out how et cetera et cetera et cetera so I think you're making a great point, Joe, and it's an opportunity for us to push our relevance um, and to have a profound and, and relatively quick impact on the business. Does that make sense, guys? Does that hang together? More KPIs, yes. 
more KPI. <laughs> no, seriously. You just well, what, Steve, what's an example? Because the concept, and I I think there could be so many KPIs, we don't we gotta weight them. The idea of Moneyball is saying what are the one, two, or three most important that are truly are correlated and line up with the goals you want to achieve this year. In addition to that, honing in on the most important, what are the other key KPIs? Sales, financial, and what whatever else there might be, uh, marketing KPIs that we need to be measuring and to know we're on track for even the money ball KPIs and our business goals. So is there ones that, one, is there a limit of how many? And two, which ones do you choose? And maybe this is, we don't have time today on the ones you choose, but certainly uh, love to learn more about your view of KPIs. Okay. Well, in a couple of weeks, I'll give you a presentation on the subject. How's that? And, and but but I'll quickly answer that it, you know, it depends on the industry. George just cited McDonald's, and they're going to have a different set of KPIs than the manufacturing firm. So it it depends on the on the industry, and and it's like it's like OKRs. There's corporate OKRs. There's the next level of KPRs, and but anyway, quote, OKRs in theory, uh, if practiced appropriately, get uh, you know cascaded down through the organization. So. You know, the senior leadership team might have a set of KPIs that to look at. The head of operations is going to have theirs. CFO will have theirs and blah, blah, blah. So, you know. And that's, and that's, uh, yeah, guys, this is because they, they daisy chain. You know, we need, we need 10,000 people. We need to drive 10,000 qualified folks to our website in order to get you know, 1000 in order to get in, in order, you know, to winnow it down. And, and I've seen this in action. Have you guys ever seen, you know, a company that has it that is run tightly enough that they know that um, for the number of visitors on their website, we, we did it by calls, uh, calls, inbound calls. We knew that every single call was worth, if memory serves, $64. Um I'm sorry, every outbound call was worth $64 because we were we were monitoring the numbers and we knew that if when our people did an outbound, now this is back in the 90s, so there was a lot of outbound dialing. When, when our people did an outbound dial and used the process, it resulted in X dollars of revenue. It resulted in $64 of revenue, which we used to motivate the salespeople. Like, listen, every time you pick up the phone and you get hung up on you made that's sixty four dollars for the business and X dollars for you, and that you know that is a that's a, incredibly powerful to know. We had the sim similar statistics for inbound calls. We were running full page ads in the Wall Street Journal, you know, inbound calls, et cetera. But the, yeah, those KPIs flow, and uh, and it's a it's fun. The game, you know, it's the game of business, isn't that a book? Yep. Can I share? Can I share something with you guys? No. Sure. This is a KPIs that's been recommended through the Coaches Coach program, and um, to get an idea of this is the this is the, this is the agenda for a weekly meeting. Okay, so when you start thinking about what all would you cover, um, bank balance, right? What's your cash in bank? <laughs> uh, you know, total leads generated, dials, server bullet calls. Wait, this is this is my this is mine, but. Um, uh oh shoot i thought this is the uh this is the, this is the coach's one but the uh, the idea is hot topics goals process versus outcome did they get agreed to do on a weekly basis number one thing i learned from this call and then actions from my coach and then the wins journal so in a very short, short manner what you're really doing is saying okay what are your kpis what's your number one challenge what's the hot topics what are the goals that we said we're going to do and versus what we got done? One thing we learned in action from the coach in the wins journal. So in a very crisp basis, you're tracking your, it's, it's, this is a, this is not necessarily a um, recommended for growth drive, but it's a format that could be um, monitored a little bit or, or, or switched around 
and it's got you know you've got your strategic plan in there um and then you got tactical plan in there and a revenue profit budget and time budget and, and then personal growth plan so there's elements here i'm going to stop sharing but the idea being is that you know could we should we um, have that minuteness of it all or that is just the feature of some the growth coach brings that element to the to the party and you know and it's just it's one person's way of executing on the business of growth drive that's a good idea just uh, one of our uh ex-colleagues from this from this thing scott barth if you remember him he does a really good yeah. check of uh documenting client meetings you know so, you know, not not exactly that format, but it's, you know, what did we talk about last time? What were your actions? What were my actions? And this is what I've completed. Now, where are you on yours? And blah, blah, blah. So a summary like that. And back on KPIs, uh, Larry, I'll, I'll dig it up if I don't forget. But, but I've got a, a, uh, a long... PDF on, on KPIs. And it basically, the first thing you do when you're thinking about KPIs is define your strategic intent because it all, all the KPIs flow from that. And each yep. organ, each department, so to speak, can have a strategic intent, which will, you know, uh, suggest particular eight or KPIs to, to be analyzed and, and measured. So I'll dig up that uh, that document. Hey Steve, how do you how do you create a KPI for a goal in a department that's a very functional department that does maybe has one quantitative goal and two or three qualitative goals? Well, I'll harken back to a webinar I was in several months ago on. OKRs and um, where, where there wasn't a numerical goal you could cite, then you somehow try to create a percentage accomplished and, and measure the percentage percentage accomplished uh, through right. over the time period. Yeah, the the the, the objective is to have uh, as quantitative as possible, right? As quantitative as possible, and and maybe that goes uh, part way to to meshing up. You know the qualitative, the emotional, uh, with the quantitative, and uh, biz, you know, but businesses are maybe businesses are run on numbers, but they're fueled by emotion, and it's it's an interesting it's an interesting area for sure. Yeah, thanks for, thanks one of the ways I do that is, for example, hiring a key person. So, say the vice president is hiring a new director of operations. Well, you have to then recruit, interview, hire, onboard. And so those are defined steps, and we'll put a date for each of those and a key element for achieving each. So that's kind of how and with KPI, KPI on those steps and uh, dates. That's the best we've come up with with certain types of qualitative key results that need to be achieved. So, but I'm always looking to learn from others on the qualitative side as well. But if you get to have that, uh, Steve, and send it along or put it yeah. in circle, the KPI list, that'd be great. Okay. I, I have those, but I always like to learn from others on their list. Yeah. I'm on Guru's uh, email list to measure what matters, I, you know, you'd recognize the name if I met, if I mentioned it, if I could remember it, which I can't, but anyway, if you want to, they, I think that that's the organization, they have a certification program where you can um, study and mm -hmm. get a little bit better at o OKRs. Somewhat yeah. of a different question here. Do we do enough to uh, educate the customer what the advisor is versus the consultant? Um, because right now, like, part of a, I'm going through this coaches coach and whatnot, and in the big conversation around what a coach is versus a consultant, what's an advisor versus a consultant, 
do we do enough of that clarity um, is introduction introducing in our slide deck um, to, so we set expectations as a coach right so oh. you're or as an advisor um, you're not doing the work but you're pointing so all that drives to the KPIs the KPIs are are the results of those activities and it really it's um, we need to promote the fact that someone owns that KPI and part of that coaching it's not us we're not we're not the consultant and we don't own the KPI it's the KPI's result of someone around uh, internal external getting that delivered um is that clear enough in this in the in the conversations early on with the clients that um the role responsibility of the growth drive. I think oh, that wow. I think that's incumbent upon each of us to to make that clear at the outset. Yeah. What? No, I it, go ahead, George. No, no, Steve. I didn't mean to interrupt. Oh. I was. Yeah. The scope of. I mean, this goes into our our scope, and and this is what I'm going to help you with, and this is and and a lot of you guys are are saying specifically, this is this is what I don't do. So I'm a fractional CFO, um, but I am not a bookkeeper. I am not going to do your bookkeeping. Uh, you know, let's let's make it clear. You know, I, you know, those are the types of things. You know, Larry is. Um, you know, Larry works on senior leadership. Larry, how would you how would you summarize the scope? Uh, you you work you working a lot more than senior leadership, but um, how would you summarize the scope of what you do? Because it is important for each of us to do that and and early. Set well, in, in Francis language, if you remember, uh, Steve yeah. knows Francis, Joe, I'm not sure if you know Francis. He, one day at one of our meetings in Charleston or Fort Lauderdale. Can't it was remember. right here. Yeah. It was here. He, he, he was stuck on, well, we all view our work differently. Can we just level set on what level interaction we have? And so what we realized is there's level one people who just, and I forget the one, two, three, four, five, five levels. Five is the uh, fractional CFO, CSO, CIO, whatever it is, fractionally, you're actually doing the work. Yeah. One is I just create strategic analysis and plans and hand you the recommendation. What you do with them is on, is, is, is and we have people in our community that are in all five levels. Exactly right. For me, I'm not in level one or two alone. I'm often one, two, three. I don't do the work um, at all. I have done a few things where I got into maybe a level four, but I don't like it. But it, it's almost always levels one, two, three. Strategic, business planning, management, ex execution, coaching. And with the uh, leadership team, but mainly the CEO owner. Yeah. So that's that's my practice, but everyone is different. And I and I think that these are good conversations because we speak from our own view of where we are, our practice is at. And someone who's at a level five might have a very good career in practice and that's what they want. Yep. And of course, you, you could you. parse it. You could be a, a level five on these six drivers and a level one on mm -hmm. another driver. So, yeah. yeah, you're right, Steve, because I do get to level four on sales, where I'll, I'll get more hands on and helping them actually develop, de design either their management team structure and function or their sales structure and function. And I will get actually do that work for that structure framing for them, which you could say is level four. Yep. You're right. In those two areas. Good stuff, George. I, I'm going to run. I have my CEO peer group. And this is, I'm going to tell you my takeaway from today. I run a, a really good strategic CEO peer group. And uh, they're getting caught in not keeping, not all of them. They're getting better. Their cadence of execution. And having a beans. I can challenge them later in the day after we do our copy uh, problem solving to say, how do we improve the timely execution that you are committing to yourself and sharing with your peers here? What are the ways we stay on top of that? So uh, I, I appreciate bringing this up. Yeah. It'll be used this afternoon. 
Awesome. Joe. Joe, yeah, you're, you're muted, man. Thanks, Larry. In the Vistage groups, uh, you know, the, the thing that I've always seen work well, Larry, is it's all peer-to-peer -peer pressure, right? So if you're coming up with your with your homework not done, it's 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 you're insulting your teammates. Mm -hmm. You know, you could tell me the, ch the chair that you dug at your homework or I'm not going to make the meeting, whatever. Don't tell me. Tell your peers and then turn around and let the white blood cells do their work. <laughs> My group's good. And, and what we do is we have, Joe, to that point, a shared point, share drive, where all our action commitments wow. are listed. And, and you could see my eyes weren't always, I had to check that while we were on our call. I was going through all those action commitments, work in pro. we have it labeled, completed, work in progress, yet not yet started. And they're, uh, they, they didn't, I don't know where they stand because they didn't go in and update it. We also have in there the, the money bull KPIs. And so we, it's getting used to using SharePoint as a communication accountability tool with each other. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I got to hop to another meeting too. Yeah, so. I think we all have to scoot. Larry, good luck with your meeting, Joe. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys. Appreciate and, uh, it. We'll see you. Have a great week. Thanks.